One of the things that is up for debate right now is whether or not the Bidens uh, claim about the Europeans wanting to oust Victor Shokin uh, was true. And Victor Shokin actually came out to the New York Post and said, hey, wait, no, this isn't true. There's an interview even on Fox News about it. But this article was what was given to me as proof that the Bidens were corrupt and in particular Joe Biden. So I figured... I'd read through it. This article itself makes uh, just a lot of observational claims. It talks about uh, interviews. It talks about a couple other things. But what's really important is there's the facts, right? Uh, the Ukraine's prosecutor general, Viktor Shokin, for his efforts to fight corruption. So the European Commission basically praised the prosecutor general. That's what they're saying. When you click on this link, it brings you to fired Ukraine prosecutor Viktor Shokin says he believes Bidens were bribed, right? Which is not exactly the same um, as what was mentioned in the previous article about when this was happening. This is just a little earlier in the month. One thing to keep in mind is any news article that links back to its own site as its own evidence is problematic, but we're going to run with it. Right. So we kind of go through here. It talks about receiving bribes. Many people have seen that. But what I wanted to talk, what I wanted to figure out was you got Victor Shokin on one side. Right. And he's saying, hey, I wasn't being targeted. I wasn't being uh, looked at by the European Commission or the Europeans in general. So when Joe Biden says he was there with them, he's lying. It's a big claim, but it is a he said, he said kind of scenario. Right. Joe Biden says, no, 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 we were there with people. And this one says, no, 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 you weren't. Right. So you kind of read through this article and the the genuine evidence um, that is presented is an internal Obama Biden administration email that says officials were surprised that Biden was pushing for Shokin's ouster as a condition of US aid. Well, just to keep in mind, uh, there is an by this time, there was already an anti-corruption kind of commission sort of set up internationally ran by the OECD to determine if loans should actually even go to Ukraine due to all the corruption that's there. And that's actually why Shokin was in his position in the first place was because the previous guy was so corrupt and wasn't instituting any of the laws, requirements, recommendations, anything. Like it was so bad that in Ukraine you could legally basically bribe people and there wasn't any law to go against. So they were requiring laws, more specificity about punishment, uh, and a lot of independence for researchers, right, and investigators. And that just wasn't happening. So they got Victor Shokin and they brought him in. Okay, that was, that was why he was brought in in the first place. So you have this internal email, which to me already sounds like it would be questionable, but it could be very specific. They could just be saying, hey, the Obama Biden administration was surprised because they were going to give money to the Ukraine regardless of what was found internationally in terms of anti-corruption. So we go over to Just News and we start reading through this. New memos undercut Biden uh, in, this, in this instance for the impeachment trial, right? So we're reading through this article and it quotes that Ukraine has made sufficient progress on its reform agenda to justify a third guarantee, right? Because these are loans that the Ukraine is seeking and it links to this uh, PDF. Now, I can't verify the PDF's uh, valid, you know, credibility or anything, but I'm willing to read it, right? And just kind of go over it. So click on the link. And the first thing you notice is there's a lot of people at state.gov, usdoj.gov. There's a lot of email lists in here. This is a big chain, right? So this is the Ukraine loan guarantee um, that we're kind of talking about. So it's going through all this stuff. A lot of these names look familiar. Some of them do not. Uh, but we go through and we just want to see what the, what the actual review is, right? So it was agreed and it goes through kind of this information that um, they would kind of guarantee the loan with some caveats. So that's the most important part, right? So Ukraine had been working on this progress. And in terms of what they needed to do, it was very minimal in terms of like the actual anti-corruption, right? It was just kind of make some laws, start an independent group and go forward with that. And we'll get there. But the things that when I read through this kind of pulled out as the caveats, right? 
macroeconomic stability, whatever. I don't, that sounds really big uh, to me, but hey, sure. Uh, maybe they had more information elsewhere. Social safety net, sure, uh, for people, right? But these kinds of stuff, because we're talking about corruption here. So anti-corruption e-procurement, right? With, but with revised uh, language to be more specific. Um, so this starts telling me that they're, they want more anti-corruption laws, but they have, you know, they've got to be more specific because maybe it wasn't working out right. And then the other part is, is rule of law. So this part is pretty interesting to me because it wants to ensure that the decision is set up with an independent inspector general that cannot be easily overturned because that was happening before, right? So you have investigations that go to the prosecutor general's office or go through the prosecutor general's office in general. And people are like, they just shut it down, right? They've created obstacles. They wouldn't let high officials uh, be reviewed. So they would just kind of stop. Right. So one of the requirements was for Victor Shokin's uh, prosecutor general's office was an independent group to be set up to investigate so that they couldn't be corrupt themselves. The anti-corruption group couldn't be corrupt themselves. So they're saying, yeah, there's some progress happening, but we're still seeing these problems were not specific enough. So you're getting things around and like probably technicalities of semantics. And there's not an actual rule of law that sets up like an actual independent uh, investigation. So we need to make sure that those things get set up in order to continue going forward. So it is saying, hey, we like the fact that there is progress because this is a big thing, right? Corruption through an entire country. It's a big thing. We want some stuff to happen. We're seeing some things start to happen. And now that we've switched to Victor Shokin, there's some stuff that's occurring, but it's not specific enough. And it's not independent enough because we're still seeing a lot of what we did before. At least that's what it reads like. So when I got here, I said, hey, who does this? Like who actually checks in on the anti-corruption? Is there like a European group? Is there anyone else, right? All right, so when I was researching, this is what I came across. I came across the OECD, okay? And this was the round three monitoring of Instable, Instable Anti-Corruption Action Plan. So just keep in mind that that's the overall group. That's what they're kind of looking into, but it is around Ukraine, right? So if you look here, the established in uh, 1998, the main objective, the anti-corruption network, right? Um, and it's to support various different groups, like uh, here we go, right? So um, the specific groups that it looks at is it supports anti-corruption reforms in Armenia, uh, Georgia, a bunch of other places, Mongolia, Ukraine. So here you go. And they meet and they talk about the action plans and what's happening. So this is just to see, like, is there anyone out there who was seeing the same things that you know, Biden was seen, or at least, you know, claimed to be indicating, or is it just completely a he said, he said, right? And when you start reading through this document, um, you're going to notice a bunch. This will be in the link so you can read through everything you want. The first thing to note is that they, this particular one was from 2015 in March. So Victor Chokin would, you know, basically been in the position for maybe a month or two, right? But it talks about where they were coming from. Um, and it's a review of 2011 to 2014. And when you get through this, you'll still see that in various ways, uh, they were noticing progress and they were identifying good things that Ukraine was doing. But again and again and again, especially in this instance uh, around their just kind of prevention of corruption, when you look over these page six and page seven information, you can kind of see that during audits, what was going on is they would get information on people but then it'd be blocked or people would be you can't investigate that or any other kind of special interest would sort of be uh, prevented right so there wasn't a lot of integrity and there wasn't a lot of independence for these investigation groups but it also wasn't able to prosecute um, but you can continue reading through this uh, there's lots and lots of information uh, in this particular document i thought wow 
Was there one of these for when Victor Shokin was in his position, right? For longer. And there certainly was. So here's a new one that is after his firing, but actually takes measures into a lot of what he was talking about. And one thing that's really important um, in this is he's the general prosecutor's office. So whenever they're talking about that, that's him, right? So I just did a search for prosecutor and I just kind of clicked through a bunch of these to see like what was going on. So here's the actual other group. So whenever you see SAPO, that is the Special Anti-Corruption Prosecutor's Office, here after SAPO, that is different from Victor Shokin, who's the General Prosecutor Office. Okay, I know that's confusing. SAPO is technically under the Prosecutor's Office, but um, as part of these requirements, it was set up to be independent so that the investigations could happen without... Um, you know, basically Victor Shokin coming in and saying you can't go further because that's what they were seeing in those prior reports and with the previous prosecutor general. And when you start to look, remember he was he was removed at the um in March of 2016. So when you see things, hey, August 2016, things were done. January to July, some stuff was done, but not as much. August, more was done, right? And you keep going through this. You can kind of see like, okay, yeah, it is getting there, but most of it starts to take place after Victor Shokin is removed. So here you go. So here's the prosecutor general's office, right? And uh, when they're looking at the kind of information that's going on, they say, hey, the information seems credible, um, but... There's really not anything we're seeing from the prosecutor general's office in terms of being stepped up um, or that's required by the recommendation. And in fact, there's really a lack of improvement in the act, international activity of the prosecutor general's office. But they're seeing positive trends with that, remember, in, required to get funding, independent specialized anti-corruption prosecutor's office. So... What they're talking about is that essentially they were seeing a lot of the same stuff. Tons of requests were going up to get help. Those requests were being worked upon, but then they were being essentially blocked. So they really want to get uh, that more teeth in the prosecutor general's office. And that's even after Victor Shokin is gone. So here you go. In this instance, in this paragraph, what they're saying is that the SAPO's independent enough um, and that they feel that by the end of 2017, um, with the establishment of the court that's also independent, that um, it's an independent mechanism to fight corruption in Ukraine will finally be constituted, essentially. So it's independent enough. There's now a place uh, to actually execute on these requests um, to bring them through court and actually move forward with that to fight corruption. Again, by end of 2017, which means, again, they weren't seeing a lot of movement. They're getting the, what we're seeing with the investigation is that they're showing progress with an independent investigation agency. They're investigating stuff. They're getting information and data. They're getting requests but they're not going forward with them in a way that uh, this review looks kindly upon. So, you know, Victor Shogun says he was being praised. All of this seems to uh, indicate that he wasn't doing enough. In fact, he was doing very many of the same things that his predecessor had done. So when I started reading this, I said, okay, so there was problems before. There are still problems. They're generally happy with the things outside of Victor Shokin's control, but it still doesn't specifically say like, hey, the Europeans were pro this or pro that, right? So I wondered around the time which he was being fired, what was the response? Were people, you know, happy? Were they talking about Biden being corrupt or the United States? Like, what was going on? What was the overall feeling? Like there should be some news articles, right? All right, so if you look around, you can find some articles. So this is March 29th, 2016. Basically, I want to say the day of or the day after, right? right, Probably the day after, just based upon the title. It was really close to the firing of Victor Shokin. EU hails sacking of re-Ukraines. 
prosecutor Victor Shokin, right? And let's see if the reading of those OEC documents were, were kind of right. So first of all, the Ukraine's parliament voted overwhelmingly to fire Victor Shokin. He's a scandal-ridden prosecutor general who um, failed to basically crack down on corruption, right? Even though that was one of their main concerns and it was pending uh, money. That's actually one of the reasons why they get reviewed, right? Because you're not just going to send money to a country that's just going to get taken up by uh, corruption. It says, this decision was to, there to make an opportunity for a fresh start. Um, and there's just a tang lack of tangible results in investigations into serious cases, as well as investigations of high-level officials within the prosecutor's general office. And we saw that. So he was there to reform and just failed at it, just like his predecessor. But is this the only one? All right, so here's another article from the Financial Times instead, and it's dated February 10th, 2016. And it talks about, hey, the International Monetary Fund is going to just say, look, you're not going to get aid packages unless some things start changing. And that's, hey, the Ukraine pledged to do more to fight a corruption and reform state company, and they just didn't. So getting rid of Viktor Shokin wasn't just a Biden thing. Now, this doesn't prove that, like, maybe Biden didn't know any of this information. Maybe he wasn't paying attention, but it all seems to connect. We have that loan guarantee memo that calls out specifically, like, whoa, 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 wait. We're saying there's good progress, but um, you got to change some of your laws to be a lot more specific so that you can actually track these people down and make them held liable, right, for some crimes. And we need more efforts being done with the rule of law with an independent organization, right? So they got rid of their old prosecutor general. They bring in Victor Shokin. Victor Shokin's like, cool, I see all these promises. I see all these things. I'm going to do it. He gets reviewed. There's some progress, but mostly in SAPO, the group that's independent from him that he was required to set up in order to continue way back in 2015. And by September of 2016, they're like, look, we're only recently seeing changes happen. But that's because they got rid of Victor Shokin, right? All of the stuff prior to his release, still problems, still things coming up for requests, but not getting executed. And that's all backed by the Irish Times and the Financial Times in terms of what they were seeing and why people were getting uh, removed so much so that they required changes. Okay. So the question remains, you know, Victor Shogun started off, he said, hey, look, um, nobody else was concerned with this. The EU was praising me for all of my changes and everything I was doing. Well, we saw that that wasn't exactly correct. We saw that under the prosecutor general's office, which is the SAPA, the SAPA was getting praised by a bunch of stuff and they were noticing some movement in uh, various different corruption charges. But what they weren't seeing was enough. So much so that the IMF, even up to when he was being ousted, were saying like, whoa, you, if you need money, and we are the guarantors for that. You need to do more right now. And after Victor Shokin gets removed, that's when they started to see changes, or at least enough changes to show those, you know, some of those things as significant or just progress in the OECD report that we saw. So it's not that Victor Shokin is a trustworthy fellow. What he said about himself and what the European Commission was saying about him was pretty much wrong. So why should we believe him when he says, well, I think the Bidens were being bribed? He can't be trustworthy about his own stuff. He was leading a corrupt government uh, investigating prosecution group and was allowing uh, high-level officials to get away with it. So it seems to follow, though it's not provably true, but it seems to follow that Victor Shokin will basically do whatever he can in order to maintain his position and his power while deflecting onto other people the, the problems that he's got. So this is clearly not evidence against Biden, and it 
clearly shows when you dig in that Biden was not alone in his assessment of Viktor Shokin and the state of the Ukrainian government at the time. Well, that's it for today. I'm Danny here at Caffeine Zombies, where we're trying to do deep dives and research into anything that comes our way in order to kind of determine what's true, what's not, what's still unknown. Until next time, like and subscribe and see you then. This video is brought to you by Caffeine Zombies. Coffee's so good, it'll wake the dead.